gates, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord that's strong and mighty, the Lord that's mighty in battle. So we come to celebrate and serve our risen Savior. We give all glory and honor to our King of kings, our Lord of lords. Be all glory, be all honor. God, we bless you and we come to celebrate you. We come to lift you up in this place. We declare that you are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Yes, God. We lift you up, oh God. So let's lift it up together. Here we sing. We say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth? Your name in all the earth. You set your glory above. You set your glory The heavens and the earth. The heavens. Yes, God. When we the take a moment just to think that all of you have made, when I think, I think of all you made. The sun, the moon, the, the stars, sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough. No praise is high enough to express, to express how great you are. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you are. Lord, you're mighty. Strong and mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Strong and mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Strong and mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
Hey, listen, it's almost June and we are just a couple of weeks away from graduation Sunday. And if you have graduated, your child has graduated, or someone that you know in the Greater Deliverance family has graduated, please make sure that you contact us as soon as possible, no later than June 6th, so that we can recognize you in our upcoming virtual graduation celebration. Thank you so much. You can email us at greaterdeliverance at sbcglobal.net or you can contact us by phone at 310-330-4800. Peace and blessings. Look forward to celebrating you or your loved one. You're the king who sits on the throne, oh God. So God, we just thank you for all that you've done. God, Moses said, who should I tell the people that you are? And you said, I am who I am. God, we thank you for being who you are. Jesus asked Simon Peter, who do you say that I am? So well, no matter your situation right now, tell your situation who God is. God, you are our everything. You are our resource. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are our healer. You are our redeemer. You are our peace. So God, we just lift up your name in this atmosphere. There's no name greater than your name. God, you're so holy. You're so righteous. You're so faithful. God, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, oh God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I have everything I need.
So this morning I want to begin a, a new series and I want to title this series, Am I My Brother's Keeper? Am I My Brother's Keeper? Never before has it been more clear that as a society, as a people, that we need to learn how to love, respect, and appreciate other people. God is just as concerned about how we treat other people as he is about how we worship and honor him. One day Jesus was confronted by some religious leaders and they asked Jesus the question, what is the greatest of all the commandments? And Jesus, without hesitation, replied and said that the greatest of all the commandments is to love your, the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and with all of your mind. But he didn't stop there. He proceeded on to say the second is just like the first, and that is love your neighbor as yourself. And then in John, just in case we're not clear about God's position when it comes to how we treat other people, God says it like this in John, the scripture says that if you say you love God and you hate your brother, you're telling a lie. He says, because how can you say you love God whom you've never seen, but hate your brother who you see every day? I want to submit to you that as a nation, that America, if it were on trial today, we would be found guilty of false advertisement. Because for years, America has claimed to be a Christian nation while denying equal rights to all or treating some one way and treating others a different way. And then to add insult to injury as a country, we have consistently over the years attempted to remove God out of every aspect of our society. And while I don't want to suggest today that God is responsible for any of the tragedies or the things that we're confronting as a country right now. I do want to simply say that God is certainly speaking in the midst of it. He is certainly speaking through it all. At the beginning of the year, we opened this year up facing the COVID-19 virus, uh, a, 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 a virus that kills by attacking the respiratory system and cutting off the breath of its victim. And then like many of you, uh, this past week, while we have certainly still been dealing with the effects of COVID, our attention was turned to the ruthless and brutal killing of a man by the name of George Floyd when a police officer who was paid to protect and serve placed his knee on his neck and added pressure to his neck until he could no longer breathe. The man cried, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and ultimately breathed his last breath and died. And like some of you, I asked the question to myself, how is it possible that a person can be so cruel, that a person can be so evil? And then I had to think to myself that any time you remove God from the equation, the only thing that can exist is evil. And so this morning we're all faced with the same question that we find in our text today. Am I my brother's keeper? And for those of you who have never read your Bible, I want you to know this morning that that phrase did not find its origin in the movie New Jack City. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that phrase finds its origin in the book of Genesis, in the story about two brothers by the name of Cain and Abel. You've heard the story. These two, these were the two children of Adam and Eve, the progenitors of the human race. And like these two siblings and those of us who have siblings, you know, you were raised to love one another. And I'm sure these two brothers like us that have siblings were raised to love one another. But the Bible lets us know that over the course of time that one of them allowed evil to get into his heart. And the Bible says that one day Cain, the older brother, rose up and slew or murdered 
his own brother. Not because his brother had done anything to him, but simply because he was jealous of his brother. He, and he allowed anger to get into his heart. And ultimately, he allowed his anger and his jealousy to get out of control and caused him to murder his brother. But before he did it, God said something to him. God asked him a question. Why are you so angry? Why is your face looking like that? Why are you mad dogging your brother? Before he can answer the question, God said to him, listen, if you don't get control over your issue, if you don't get control over your anger, if you don't get control over your jealousy, sin or trouble, evil is waiting ahead of you to get you and to control you, to take control over your life. And so when we ask the question, am I my brother's keeper? What we're really asking is what's controlling you? Because the answer to that question is rooted in what is controlling us. What is controlling our life? Is anger controlling our life? Is jealousy controlling our life? Is pride controlling our life? Because how we treat others finds its root in the answer to the question of what is controlling our lives. See, if I'm being controlled by God, if I'm being controlled by the spirit of God, then I'm going to treat others kind. I'm going to treat others with love. But if I'm being controlled by my flesh, if I'm being controlled by jealousy or insecurity or evil, it's going to play out on how I treat my fellow brother, how I treat my fellow sister. Do me a favor. If somebody's around you, just ask them real quick. What's controlling you? What's controlling your life? Cain and Abel, are two brothers, and the Lord had blessed both of them to be able to provide for themselves. And like many of us, they would give back to God a portion of what God had given to them. And the Bible records that, records that, I believe, because the way you give is a, to God is a reflection of, of your heart towards God. Cain, the Bible says, gave an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. But the Bible says that Abel brought the Lord the first and the fat of his flock, the firstlings of his flock and the fat portions. And the Bible says the Lord looked upon Abel's gift with favor because Abel gave God his best, but Cain gave God the rest. You get what I just said. Abel gave God his best, but Cain gave God what was left. He gave God the rest. And the Bible says, as a result, the Lord looked upon Cain, did not look upon Cain's gift in the same way he looked upon Abel's gift. And as a result, Cain became envious and jealous of Abel because God was favoring Abel's life. Isn't it something when people can get angry with you and you've done nothing to them? But can I just say something to you this morning? This is a side note. Don't let anybody dim your light simply because they're too insecure to handle you. Let me say that again. Don't let your light be dimmed because somebody else is too insecure to handle you. See, instead of learning from his brother, Cain got jealous of his brother. He failed to realize that God does not give us brothers to hurt us or to harm us, but to help us. The beautiful thing about differences and we're all different is the only way that we can truly be our best is when we learn the principle of collaboration and not competition. Listen, I'm not your competition. We're here to complement one another and we've got to learn as humanity to not be jealous of each other, not to be hatred, not to have hatred toward one another, but to realize that the only way I can be the best me is to learn how to love, appreciate and collaborate with my brothers and sisters. And I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but listen, I, there's one thing that really, that really bothers me. I, I, I have uh, an issue with, and that is, I, I can't spend time with being around jealous and envious 
people. I don't know if anything worse than a jealous joker. <laughs> the Bible says that jealousy is, is as cruel as the grave. Listen, we've got to learn how to stop hating on people simply because they have something or they do something or they have something different than us. Uh, and, and, and this is the problem uh, that we're facing in our country right now. People hate one another. People have hatred towards other people simply because of the color of their skin, simply because they don't look like them, simply because maybe they don't sound like them. But listen, can I just say this humbly? Don't hate on me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> listen, don't hate on others simply because they don't look like you or they don't do things the way you do things. You may not like it, but God loves diversity. God loves diversity. And putting somebody else's light out does not make your light shine any brighter. Let me say that again. You putting or dimming somebody else's light does not make your light shine any brighter. Let me say it like this. Stepping on somebody else does not make you taller. God loves diversity. In verse 5 of our text, God saw that Cain was mad dogging Abel. He saw, saw that Cain was jealous and envious of Abel. He said, why are you angry? Why does your face look like that? Listen, God never asked us a question because he does not know the answer. Whenever God asks us a question, it's because God is trying to show us us. Let me say it another way. Whenever God asks you a question, it's really because God is simply trying to show you you. He's trying to help you to see yourself. He's trying to help you to place the blame in the proper place. Because listen, if you don't like someone you have never met, they're not the problem. You're the problem. You and you alone are the problem. You are your problem. But here's what God says to Cain. If you do right, you'll be well. But if you don't do right, sin is at the door. In other words, if you don't control, get control over what's in your heart, what's in your heart is going to get control of you and will cause you to do something that you're going to regret. Listen, if we're going to maintain proper relationships, if we're going to be our brother's keeper, if we're going to learn how to coexist with all types of people and maintain healthy relationships, we got to be willing to confront our own unresolved attitudes and issues. We, we, we got to be willing to confront ourselves. But here in the text, what we find in Genesis, the fourth chapter, that rather than confronting his issues, Cain lures his brother out into a field. Anger gets and jealousy gets the best of him, and he takes his own brother's life. And that brings me to the main point of our message this morning, and that is instead of allowing himself to be led by God, instead of heeding the voice of God, Cain rejects God. He gives in to his jealousy, and he takes his brother's life. And then the Lord said, God said to Cain, where is your brother? And Cain replies very sarcastically, and Cain says to God, I don't know where my brother is. Am I my brother's keeper? And when he said that, it was really symbolic of people today who are unwilling to take responsibility for the welfare of their brother and sister. Listen, I don't care whether your sister or brother is black, white. I don't care what the situation is. The Bible is very clear. As a believer, God tells us to love your neighbor as yourself and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. As I close this morning, many scholars believe that the name Abel means breath. The name Abel means breath. And when Cain took his brother's life, when he killed Abel, breath, it was symbolic of the departure 
of the Spirit of God. Let me say that again. When he killed Abel, whose name meant breath, when he took his life, it symbolized the departure of the Spirit of God. And during this season that we're in, this time of the COVID virus, which is taking the breath out of people's life, when we're facing uh, unarmed black men being killed by police officers and peace officers who are killing them by taking their breath. I believe that God is speaking to us very clearly, telling us that we need to return to him, that you and I need to be empowered by his spirit, empowered by the power and the presence of God. And I find it very interesting that today as we uh, celebrate today, as we mourn rather the loss of our brother at the end of this, this particular week, that we would also this same week be celebrating Pentecost Sunday, the day when we recognize the promise of the Spirit is here, the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8 that after that the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And listen, right now we need the power of God in our lives. We need his direction. We need his strength. We need his comfort in these crazy times. And so my prayer today, as we close out today, is that you would not only invite God into your heart, invite Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, but my prayer is, is that in this season that you would ask God to fill you with his spirit, that you would seek to be spirit-led, and that you would speak to be, seek to be under the control of the Spirit of God and not under the control of anger, pride, frustration, jealousy, or anything that will cause you to bring harm to one of your fellow human beings. But we've got to learn how to love, respect, and appreciate other people. Am I my brother's keeper? I want to conclude by saying, yes, we are all our brother's keeper. I want to pray with you, so bow your head. Father, I thank you for just the opportunity to share today, and I pray that something I said has challenged my friend, my brother, my sister that is watching today, that if there's anything in their life that is controlling them, whether it be anger, pride, whether it be jealousy, whatever it is, I pray that, you, that they would turn it over to you, and that today that they would ask you, Lord, to forgive them and to invite you into their heart to be their Lord that they would seek to be, live a life that is led by your spirit and not by their anger and their emotions. I thank you for healing the pain and the suffering that people are experiencing right now emotionally. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you are blessed. Listen, live in victory this week and make sure that you're led by the spirit for as many as are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. Peace and blessings, we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you so much for your continued support. Before we close out, we always give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. And I want to remind you that as you give today, that the scripture says that God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you have in all things all sufficiency and may have in abundance. And so I want to encourage you as you continue to give to stay in faith and know that God will meet every need of yours according to His riches and glory. Thank you so much for your continued support. Peace and blessings.